Sylvia Jablonski, the CEO of Define CTFs, QQQY, JPY, two of the newest ones. I know you have a, a suite of others as well. Hydrogen, uh, you got yeah. cruises, you yeah. got EVs, quantum AI, 5G, a little bit of everything in there. Yeah, but these ones are interesting because uh, like we laid out in, like you laid out in the article, kind of a blend between um, near-term options that we talk about all the time, yeah. people in the YouTube chat talk about all the time, uh, and I think these are kind of unique in structure for sure. Yeah. So Sylvia, welcome to the show. How are you? Good morning. Great for ha- Thanks for having me. Great to be here. Doing good. Doing good. Excited about the new products. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and especially like in times like this, and I, I know you guys um, utilize zero day or near term uh, options. How, how are you navigating this kind of crazy market? It's, I feel like we've had a complete 180 over the last couple of weeks. Yeah, the the you know September uh, doldrums have have definitely hit us, but that's to be expected, right? September is usually a pretty crummy month most years, so you know we kind of saw it coming. Um, and and actually, you know what's pretty good about the strategy that we run is that you can see it playing out now, right? So great example is is last Friday you had in the case of uh, QQQY, you had the Nasdaq down one point seven percent, and we were down one point four percent because the premium that we were able to capture, you know, kind of buffered a little bit of the downside performance there. So, you know, volatile markets that are that are kind of highly volatile are not necessarily the best for the strategy, but they do tend to dampen the downside. Um, what we love is sort of sideways markets and, and obvious, obviously bullish markets are markets that don't move downward too far. We, we love that, too, because we trade a lot of yeah. on <laughs> both sides. That, right? Yeah, well, sideways <laughs> markets are great for us because we primarily trade in options. And I know that you guys are incorporating options and you get that extrinsic value, which is which helps buffer the downside that you see. I love that you mentioned that because one of the things I mentioned in the article is on a short term basis, because you're collecting some sort of premium, even if the market goes down 10 percent, you're going to outperform just being long passively long the index because you're collecting some sort of premium. So it does, you know, everybody gets spooked by the idea of short-term options, but in practice, the short-term risk is actually uh, dulled a little bit because of that extrinsic value that you that you pick up on the entry. So it, it, it's really cool that you guys are, are incorporating that. It kind of, you know, raises a question for me of like, you know, how do you guys look at um, the markets and determine your entry? Because I know there is some, when I was reading the prospectus, there's some variable to the duration, whether it be zero day or up to about a week out in time. Do you guys have anything that you kind of um, pinpoint in terms of, of when to enter that, you know, that specific duration? Or is it kind of a subjective thing? How do you guys kind of approach that in, in the markets? Yeah, great question. So I'll, I'll, I'll use QQQY as an example. Jeffy works the same way. But the way that we start the fund, and this is sort of super important to know, is you know you have all these covered call strategies out there, right? And they own the index. And so they start with an income environment of whatever the dividend is on that index. So so it, for S&P, it might be like 1.4% or something. We start with a base of cash and treasuries. So we have this higher income environment that we're starting with at baseline of 5% that you're getting from treasuries. We then use cash. So these are cash covered, um, um, put right strategies, basically. So we enter into a trade at the end of the day, and then that trade expires within essentially 24 hours. So at the next close, the only reason we would sort of use a different type of option besides, you know, one day to expiry or that, you know, zero DTE as it's being kind of coined is if it didn't exist or if there was some liquidity issue, you know, you sort of need a a hedge out there. But the goal is just every single day, slightly in the money puts are sold. We try to capture that, you know, 25 bips or so time decay. If we do that about, you know, 250 days of the year, you're starting out with 60%, right? And then the dividend that you should expect would be, that plus or minus whatever happens with the underlying index. So if if we just have a you know a stellar year of upside on Nasdaq, it could be higher than that. Mm-hmm. If we have a, a year that continues on this way, where you're kind of losing a percentage or so, or, or you know bips every day, then it would be lower than that conceivably, right? So um, it's all about capturing that high income environment and and getting you know essentially the performance of the index with some capped upside. 
I, and I, I like the, the idea of having it. And because this is obviously a new environment of, of higher rates. So there is, you know, prior to yeah. the last couple of years, it didn't really make sense to have it in treasuries versus just the underlying asset that paid three or five or, or seven percent a year. But now you've got an asset that you can kind of allocate towards that's that's not the underlying asset that pays a much higher, higher dividend in that in that in that situation. So that's it's it's cool. Yeah. I mean, do you think that this would be something that, you know, kind of came about because of the combination of obviously the interest and volatility that we see in zero day options, but also because of that treasury environment? Like, was this kind of the perfect storm of things to happen to really launch these products? It was a perfect storm, but I th- the bigger thing was the the zero you know zero DTE phenomenon, right? It hasn't been around for that long. You know, they exist for three indices: S and P, Nasdaq, and Russell. Some of the other cover call strategies out there, you know, they're awesome products too, and they're generating great income. But you know, they're shooting to get like. 7, 10, 20% if the index is, is favorable to them. You know, we're hoping to do two to three times that. And what's different about what we do and what we've sort of figured out is that if you turn that strategy on its head, which is, an, again, arguably awesome strategy, you can actually every single day take a little, you know, bite at the apple and then it resets the next day, right? So if, if you do um, a monthly covered call strategy, you're kind of locked in each month. In this case, we have, you know, however many business days per month sans holidays to capture some premium in the fund. So if, if, if that works out to about 250 days a year, you know, to generate some um, premium from, from essentially theta, the volatility towards the end of the day, I, mm. you know, you could get some outsized return on that. And then to your point, the perfect storm was, well, wait, why don't we hold treasuries too? Because then you get that automatic 5% and arguably that can go on for, you know, well, we think at least 2024, you yeah. know, given the way the Fed's talking. So, and and you remove the downside risk that comes with owning the, the outright equity, so it's it's a, yeah. a, a much yeah. less volatile uh, cash position, so to speak, opposed to just being long the Nasdaq. It's it's definitely it, it definitely is very yeah, and you know your your viewers probably understand this, but two of the kind of like biggest misconceptions or questions that we we ask are like, isn't the risk you know kind of off the charts because these are naked puts and they're cash collateralized, right? Cash and treasuries. And then the second one is, well, won't the stock assignment kill you? Well, these are index options. They cash settle at the end of the 24 hour period. So you're, you know, they're, they're expiring worthless and you're getting that premium. Um, so, you know, there's no kind of stock assignment risk either. The risk you have is the risk of, of essentially the underlying index. And even that's diversified because it's not a single stock covered call strategy. It's a put right strategy on an index, on a bread based index. And everybody has that risk. Yeah. You know, Everyone everybody, has that risk. Everybody's yeah. passively long the market in some fashion. So exactly. it, it exists for everybody. That's It shouldn't scare anybody, anybody away. And speaking of risk, I, I think it's interesting to bring up um, the fact that in these volatile times, there are there is an, a boost in implied volatility around some of these kind of micro binary events like CPI reports, PPI reports, Fed announcements, PCE coming out tomorrow. You can you can literally see the boost in implied volatility. Is that something you you embrace, or is that would that be a reason to maybe go to a, a two day, three day, or you do you want that one day because of the extra premium you can get for that period of time? Yeah, I mean, it, it, you know, it, it all sort of depends, right? Because you want the premium, but you also don't necessarily want the underlying index to tank. But um, just to answer your question in terms of how we deal with that, we, we don't really hedge for anything. You know, we're we're running the strategy the way it is so on a daily basis. We're trying to sell that, you know, 60 70 delta slightly in the money or at the money puts to generate the premium and then you know whatever happens with the index sort of happens with the index so we are susceptible to volatility um Mm -hmm. but again not really more so than holding the underlying index yeah I like, I like that. I think it, for for me, I might even consider in something like a high volatility environment, you might go right at the money just to have the most extrinsic value, give exactly. yourself the most yeah. downside protection as well to kind of play into that ebb and flow of volatility, like lesser volatility. You want to have that higher delta, that higher intrinsic value. So you get that directional move with higher volatility. You want that higher extrinsic value. You capture more premium. Um, you know, it, it helps boost the, the potential uh, uh, gains there. Um, really cool. Yeah, and to be clear, it is actively managed, so you can do all three of those things, right? You can do the slightly in the money, 
um, whether it's that 60, 70, or you can do at the money. So, and that's a decision that the trader makes on a daily basis. That's, that's awesome. And when, when are you guys trading these? Like, are they towards the end of the day? Do you have like a, a certain yeah, time it's exactly, frame? It's at the close. Yeah. It's at the close. And then, and in theory, the, you know, we, we put the trade on and, and after the market closes, we have less than 24 hours to expiry and then it's unwound um, the next day at the close. So it's truly, you know, zero DTE is kind of the, the popular, you know, marketing coin on it, but it, it is a one day period that the option is uh, with us before it settles. Yeah. So you're, you're capturing the overnight implied volatility risk. Yeah. Um, and exactly. Of course, on the open, if nothing happens, you get a little mini crush there. Uh, but yeah, we have, we have some viewers that do a similar thing with defined risk, iron flies, like iron condors that are just smashed together with the short strikes where they're just selling these one day every single day like you said it resets so you have the ability to recenter your strikes recenter your deltas so uh it's and definitely it cash an, settles so you yeah. don't have to worry about you know being long or short the equity too yeah definitely an interesting strategy you'd love to see it yeah thank you <laughs> this is really cool well uh Thanks, Sylvia, for coming on. Um, yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. How can the viewers uh, see more products of yours? Or do you, are you uh, on Twitter, things like that, or X, I should say, these days? <laughs> yeah, um, you can find my company on Twitter. You can find me just about anywhere. But um, defiancetfs.com is our website. All the products are there. We're super happy to talk with everyone, social media or otherwise. Um, yeah, we're, we're definitely around. Beautiful. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Sylvia. Thank you.